The Lord used that song there never a time to put the icing on the cake. He done done his work. We just shouted on that song. That's where that shirt, that's where them shirts come from. Never a time when he's not been faithful. Let's sing it. Go ahead. Amen. This, this song united us together. God used it. Hey, it's Friday. Night was last night. It's Saturday night tonight. This is youth rally. Get in on it. Don't be no deadhead all your life. Are Amen. You Are you weary from, from the battle, battle Lord? Amen. Lord of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Like the storm just it's going to be saved. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. 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 God make way. Come on, now say, hey, now. Tell me a time. Yeah. Come on. Tell me a morning. Well, boy. Tell me a moment. He was able to carry you through. That's right. Come on, turn it up now. Tell me a day. He was able that's good. We he could not go back the time. The time when you look back, you're going to find there was never a time. Right, listen, it's you tonight. Listen. So be strong in the Lord and remember. Amen. Amen. To take hold of faith and stand firm. Listen. Listen. You can. Yeah, 
All right. Now we need everybody to settle down and quiet. Please find your seat. Stay in it and down. Little kids, I need your everybody's cooperation. Just for a few minutes tonight. Hey, take your Bible this evening and open to the book of 1 Samuel. The book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 3. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 3. We'll show you a little story here in the Bible that's often overlooked by many people when they're telling kids Bible stories and stuff. This is a very important one, and, and really a, a good one, really. Um, and it's about a young man by the name of Samuel, which uh, you hear, the, you know, the uh, book is named after. And tonight, I'm going to illustrate something in this story. Don't, please don't judge me uh, for using a, a real life inter, uh, illustration tonight. There's a reason for it. And our kids are so visually oriented in this generation that uh, sometimes a little visual helps them a little bit within reason and scriptural. So uh, don't get too righteous on me and judge me. 1 Samuel chapter 3. I want you to look at verse number 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place that his eyes began to wax dim so that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the God of it of God was, Samuel was laid down to sleep. Look at verse 4. That the Lord called Samuel. Now that word called is what I want you to think about tonight. The Lord called him. Did Samuel have a cell phone? How did the Lord call him? When we think somebody called me, we're talking about phone. I'm going to use that analogy. Look at this. The Lord called him. And he answered, here am I. Verse 5. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. He didn't, know, he didn't realize it was the Lord. And he said, I call not. You don't, he said, well, I didn't have your number. And it was, un, it was a, uh, what you call that, uh, unknown or uh, a block, uh, listed number. We didn't know. He said, I. I thought it was you. No, nope, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Verse 6. And the Lord called yet again. He called him again. Samuel. Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am. Uh, here am I. For thou didn't call me. Did you call me again? I didn't recognize that number, Lord. And he answered, I call not. Samuel, uh, Eli said, I didn't call you. Must have been somebody else. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not know the, the Lord. Neither was the Lord of the Lord revealed to him. Yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time. So three times God calls Samuel, this little boy. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Finally, he got the message. I'm going to preach in tonight, as has been advertised all over the place, on the subject, when God calls your number. When God calls your number. When you get a call. They say that teenagers now spend an average of six to ten hours a day on the cell phone uh, calling or texting or something like that. That's a lot of time. Snapchat, Instagram, text, all these other things that y'all do. And, and people, a lot of times people say, give me your number. Can I get your number? Yeah, I want you to call me. I want you to give me a call. And because of that, Calls are on oh, 2.4 billion phone calls. Cell phone calls are made over a period of uh, uh, The average person makes 3,000 a year. You want to hear something crazy? There are 270,000 texts 
sent in this in the world per second. 270,000 per second. Text going through the air somewhere to their destination. 2.2 trillion in a year's time, or 180 billion a month, 16 million a, 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 a minute, 16 million per minute. The girls average texting 4,000 times a month. Boys, that's 135 a day. The average teenage girl texts or sends or receives 135 texts per day. They ain't got time to do nothing else. Homework, housework, wash your, uh, their, clean their toes, wash and clean up, nothing. The average boy sends 2,500 texts per, uh, per month, not near, maybe about 100 uh, per day. That's a lot. Now, have you ever had somebody call you and you uh, uh, didn't, didn't want to, first, let me say this, first, how many of you in here tonight have, you don't have to have it on you, but you do own, have a cell phone, would you raise your hand please, there, look at that, 93% of all young people in this country have a cell phone, 93%, and when you think about that, that's a tremendous amount of people buddy, and a lot to go now, if you ever had somebody call you and say, who is it? Oh, no. It's, I don't want, I just do not answer that. And you put it down. Or you, can, you, you mash some button to uh, uh, stop or decline or, or something like that because you don't want to talk to them. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. God's call for you. Do you realize this evening that God's calling you? Did you know the Lord's calling you? Number one, God called you to come to him. God calls you to come to him in salvation. There's a scripture over there where the Lord came in and said, The master is come and calleth for thee. The Lord calls you as a young person. As a matter of fact, they say that about 90% of the people who get saved get saved before the age of 25. There's something about going past 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, that very extremely lowers your chances of being saved. Your best chance of being saved to go to heaven when you die is before you get to 20 years of age. Now, people got that wrong. I've heard people all of my life, ever since I've been saved, people say, well, them little old kids, they go up out of that altar and they don't know what they're doing. And I understand what you're saying, but uh, that's really, really not what the Bible says. Uh, the, the Bible, and they say they should wait until they're adult and then make a rational, logical decision. Well, you know that Bible don't say that? The Bible does not say that a child should come and accept the Lord like an adult. It said an adult should come to the Lord like a child. Don't underestimate how, what God can do for a little boy or a little girl who comes to Him. But as a matter of fact, Many times their heart is more pure and not as rational and brilliant as some of you adults think you are. And they don't analyze everything. They just know there's a God and that Jesus died for them and they want to go to heaven when they die. And that's simple childlike faith. The Bible don't say a child's supposed to accept the Lord like an adult. It said an adult's supposed to accept Him like a child. And the Lord does call children. I just read it to you in the Bible. Samuel was a very young boy. I've known people get saved when they were five, six, seven years old and lived for the Lord their entire life. I've seen people come and, uh, uh, and, and when they come just a little child and say, Brother Danny, I know God saved me when I was just a little kid in vacation Bible school when I was five. And I know there's some that make not real. I understand that. I ain't crazy. Uh, but I'll tell you something, buddy. Don't underestimate. You know, you know who gets saved? Every person means it. If a child comes to the Lord and says, I believe you and means it in their heart, the great transaction is done. And they are saved by the grace of God. So the Lord calls you to salvation. I knew years ago in this country, there was a great preacher by the name of J. Harold Smith. And J. Harold Smith was one of those unusual preachers that had all these stories that happened to him in his ministry of people cussing God, dropping dead, and everything else. He said he was preaching a great big tent revival one night in this certain area. And he said there's three young boys sat in the back. 
He said the whole time he was preaching, they laughed. He said they mocked. They made hand gestures. They made faces at him. He said he went back uh, during the invitation, and he said, I'd like to see you young men come and get saved. Would you please get saved? They started sniggering. And one of them, who was like the leader of the, of the group, he, you know, he was like the spokesman, big old boy, he stood up and said, you take your God, your Bible, and go to hell with it. And laughed. And they all started laughing. J. Harrell said he'd come back to the pulpit. He said he said, so finished his message. And he said, in less than 24 hours, that big boy fell over dead. There was, they said they had medically, it was on record, the medica, medical examiners found no cause of death. And within 48 hours, I'm just telling you what the man said. Within 48 hours, all three of those young men are out in eternity without God. God called, and they did not answer. I'm going to tell you this evening, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord calls you. I remember when he called me. When I, I'm, He calls you when you're a little child and you're sitting on your mama's knee. And she, Remember them days? Remember when your mom sat you down and said, Honey, let me tell you the story about Jesus on the cross. You felt the Lord calling you, didn't you? I remember call, him calling me when I was just a little kid and speaking to my heart. And then when I grew up and got out in sin and, and I was living in sin for all those many years, I remember, the, I remember the Lord was always speaking to me and I was always worried about uh, dying without God. And I was always worried about uh, going to hell. And I was always worried about something going wrong and me having a car wreck or something and not being ready to meet the Lord. And I remember all those times I felt a little tough. We we used to take a basketball and go up there at that little church in Nebo. And we'd, we'd dribble that ball and sit up there. And I remember thinking, there's a church. There's a church. And I didn't even feel right cursing on the church property. I remember that just as plain as day. When I was 14, 15, 16, 17. When I was 18, I went to a revival meeting. And the Holy Spirit of God called me. I could have said no. I should have, could have said decline. I could have said just don't answer it. Thank God that night I answered. And the time has come. You're not going to hear voices from heaven. You're not going to hear angels playing on hearts. It's just a still, small voice speaking your heart. I'm telling you, God's calling some of you tonight to salvation. I'll show you the average youth group and how that goes. Find a seat. Find a seat. Yeah, man. Well, it's glad to see everybody here tonight in the youth night. I'm so glad every single one of you decided to come. Well, we only got a little bit of time, and I want to get straight to the message. Right now, the Lord's dealt with me to preach a message called God is Calling You to Salvation. Listen, young people, this message applies to you whether you rode on a church bus or whether you rode on a church van or you came in with your mama or your daddy. Right now, there is two places that you will go. Number one, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you will go to a place called hell where you will burn forever and ever and ever Amen. and you will never get out. Right. And there is welling right. and gnashing of teeth and people scream for mercy. They say, God, help me. Lord, help me and guess what you never get out of there you never get no peace mom and daddy can't get you out of there listen to me y'all if you accept Jesus Christ like the Bible says and you call upon him as a sister plays as you call upon Jesus you can escape hell oh God and go live with Jesus forever and ever oh, and ever and there's no oh, doubt God. in my mind as I started preaching on hell he felt a knock at your heart. And right now, Jesus, John, Sophia, Jalen, and Eva, God is calling you to be saved. You can accept it and be saved. Or you can deny it and you will go to hell. Oh God. Forever. Please. And ever. And ever. Y'all, it's not a joke. It's not a something to play around with. Hell's forever, y'all. It's not no fun, y'all. Why don't you get saved? Come on. Y'all, he's right. I mean, I, I've never been saved before, and I've never heard about hell, but I don't want to go, and the Lord just called me tonight to just get saved, and that's what I'm going to do. 
Girls, he is right. I've been in a hundred services that they've preached about salvation ever since I was a little girl, and I've never felt a call like tonight. This world is full of nothing but trouble and strife and heartbreak, and I'm just glad to know that there's hope for me and there's a heaven that I can go to, and I don't have to burn in hell for the rest of my life. Yes. I'm getting saved tonight. Yes. Jalen, look how ridiculous they look. They're all emotional and dramatic for no reason at all. Like, good for them, they're getting saved or whatever it is, but I'm fine how I am. You know, I agree. There is no way I'm going down there and embarrassing myself in front of all these people. You know, I'm not doing that. Actually, I'm getting a phone call right now, and that's Justin, and that's the only call I'm going to be receiving. I'm out of here. Amen, y'all. John and Eva just got saved. Yeah. Amen. They yeah. escaped hell. They ain't going to hell anymore. Listen, y'all be at church at 11 a.m. Sunday morning, y'all. Don't be late. You see, he calls all. He's calling you tonight. There's a second call God makes on your life tonight. That is, after you're saved... He called you to serve him. Now, you don't have to. You have a choice, just like being saved. You can mess around and waste your life as a Christian, or you can give it all to him and serve him. And I'm going to tell you what the great need of our churches is here tonight is for our young people, mamas and daddies alike, to call, ask the Lord as he calls you to serve him. You know what we need to do here tonight? Some of y'all need to quit playing church. Some of y'all need to quit just messing around. Some of y'all need to quit looking at and say, well, so-and-so don't do it, I'm going to do it. So-and-so does it, I'm going to do it. So you need to quit measuring yourselves by the, the so-and-so. We have hundreds and hundreds of young people who think, well, I'm saved, so it really don't matter. It's fine. I mean, good night, we're saved by grace, and God loves me, and He ain't going to be But I'm going to tell you something here this evening. Life goes by a lot faster than you think it does. You're going to get old and die before you realize it, or something's going to take you out of this world, and you're going to see the Lord before you realize it tonight. There were three men in the Bible. In Daniel chapter number 3, you've heard of these men. Their name was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were young people, just like you young people in here tonight. You know where they live? They lived in a wicked, wicked time in a wicked, wicked city. There was a king, Nebuchadnezzar, there in, in the book of Daniel that made this great big image. And he made this great big image, and the Bible said that thing was high, was three score cubits. That's six. And it said the breadth thereof was six, uh, was, uh, six cubits. That's two sixes. And then he said, he set it up in the plain of Dura, this great big idol. That's a picture of what's coming to this country and the world in the near future when the devil and the Antichrist set up an image to the beast. That's actually going to happen again. But it's spiritually, it's happening right now. And they set up this big image, and he said, everybody's going to worship this image. Listen to me. He said, everybody's going to worship this image. And a lot of people said, yeah, man, it's cool, man. I think it's cool. It's, Lord, I like that feeling I get when I watch this. I'm in. I'm all in. Let's do it. Uh, put the mark on my hand. Put the chip in my head. Uh, let's go. I'm for it. But there's a lot of people didn't want to do it. And you know what Nebuchadnezzar did? He got a band to come in and play. And he played music. He played music. And the Bible said, the Bible said, this is no accident in the Bible, y'all. The Bible said when they played that music, he said, when you hear that music play, you bow down and worship that image. And he said, if you don't, you're going to be cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Like right over here, they have this complete fiery furnace and we'll literally throw you in there. And I mean, people got scared. People got pressured. You talk about pressure, about that time the curtains opened up and there was Rubber Lips Jagger and, and Madonna and Lady Doo Doo and everybody else and, and they all come out there, buddy, and they started that sound like boom, 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 boom. And buddy, them knees started buckling like that right there. There's something about, you listen to me tonight, music is more powerful than anybody in here realizes. You can change the whole atmosphere of a room just by certain kinds of music, and you know as well as I know, you know what the devil does? The devil uses the music to break your resistance and make you give in. 
And if God can use amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Or just as I am without one plea, without thy blood was shed for me to break a sinner's heart and draw them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you doubt for one second the devil can't take a dirty music, rape music. They spell it R-A-P. It's rape music. And unless he can take uh, hip hop and he can take rock and roll and break your resistance. What, what do you think? music in a bar why do you think you're always playing music in a day to break your resistance and break you down young people here tonight when he played that music buddy they started falling like flies thank god there's three young three young men and those young men stood there like this right here their friends was going down some of their family was going down. People that was raised with was going down. You're going to face that one day. You're going to decide whether you're going to stay right with God or give in with everybody else. You're going to, they're all going to go to the parties and you're not going to go. They're all going to go get high. And you're, they stood there like this right here. And they said, ain't you going to bow down? Nope. Well, ain't you scared? Yep. You ain't going to bow down? Nope. And the king gave them one more chance. And he said, everybody play that music again. Thank God, young people here tonight, listen to me carefully. That music began to play. Everybody fell down on their face. They all said, we're, we're giving in. We'll take the mark. We'll do what you say. We want to be included. We don't want to be left out. We want to get in on everything, King. And they fell down. But in the midst of that, you could look over there, and there was three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and they stood, and they stood, and they stood. Ladies and gentlemen, they stood there. They, they didn't know what was going to happen. And the king called them in. And he said, boys, don't you realize? Do you not realize that I said if you didn't bow down, we're going to throw you in the fire? Did you not hear me say that? And they said, yes, we did hear you, king. And the king, the highest order of the land, said, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one more chance. You gonna bow down or throw you in that fire? And I love what these three young men did. You know what we need here tonight? We need some of you young people to do the same thing. I like when them old boys sit up and said, "Hey." Let me tell you something, big boy. They said the God that we serve is the God of glory. The God that brought our forefathers out of Egypt's bondage. The God that brought us through the wilderness and kept us all those many years. And they said, let me tell you something right now, King. They said, our God whom we serve, he's very able to deliver us from the fire and out of your hand. But I said, I want to tell you, and this is the good part. They said, I want to tell you something right now, big boy. Even if God don't deliver us, we are not going to bow. We are not going to give in to your mouth. We're going to stand. That's what we need here tonight. Some young people do that. Hey, they didn't even know God was going to deliver them. And they picked them up through fire, and Jesus walked in there with them. If you have a King James Bible. And if you don't, you got a bunch of junk anyway. And he said, Jesus walked in the fire with them and in the fire with them. So the Lord delivered them. You know what they did? They, they, they answered the call to service. You hear me tonight? They served him. In other words, you teenagers in here tonight, it's about time you gave everything to God here this evening. Listen, we're running out of time, y'all. Quit playing around. You've seen these girls, these boys up here giving testimony with their hand crying to heaven. You say, I'd love to have what they got. Well, get it tonight. Get it tonight. Amen. You have no business listening to dirty music of the devil if you're a child of God. You have no business showing your nakedness out in public if you're a Christian girl. You hear me? You have no business at all uh, showing your thighs and your everything else while you're out there in this old world. You have no business letting them boys use you like you as a toy and pass you around like you as a football. You have no business, brother, living like a dog or some kind of animal. You have no business at looking at dirty things on your phone and staying up at night and looking at filth on that phone. I tonight, you're a Christian. You ought to serve God. You belong to Jesus. Live for him for heaven's sake. You have no business listening to uh, hanging around with people. Uh, Lord, have mercy, people. Listen, kids. If you can look at Jesus Christ on the cross and see the blood dripping down that cross and your eyes full of blood and his lips parched and chapped and broke open and blood coming out of them, 
And you can see his back plowed up like you took a tiller and plowed up his back, looked like a piece of hamburger meat. And know he did that for you. And know you're saved and going to heaven. If you can do that, and you still spend your time, uh, brother, with a little Nos and Cardi B, Jelly Roll, Madonna, or upside down crosses who hate everything that Jesus stands for, they, they know hope. Nobody can't help you. You know, hope somebody like you in this world. You're here tonight sitting here in a Bible believing church with people that love you and care for you. There's people who gave up their time. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars to put this meeting on, have this. We didn't have this. I didn't know this because I'm bored. I got plenty to do. I put my heart and soul into this because we love you and we care about you and Jesus wants you to serve Him. And if that ain't enough to get you to serve the Lord, I don't know what to tell you. You're a mean person. You're a rotten individual, brother, to be saved. Sit and watch movies where there's naked people on there and cussing and taking God. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. You here tonight in the Bible believing church, people spend time and money on you and you still won't get right with God. Why do you? Why do you? You say, well, I was abused. Let these boys up here was abused when they were growing up. Nobody tell me, you ain't got no excuse. You're saved. You ought to serve the Lord. You ought to serve Him. Amen? That's right. You, listen, fentanyl is killing our kids at the rate of 100,000 per year. It ain't a joke. You go out there to some party somewhere and somebody gives you something, you don't know what you're getting. We all have family and friends. You hear it every day. 100,000 a year, people. That's a lot. The leading cause of death from like 18 to 30 year olds now is overdose on drugs. Listen, the devil ain't playing and God ain't playing. You are living, some of you kids them down in South Carolina. Some of you kids them down in, in uh, Rockingham. Some of you kids are living near these big cities like Charlotte. You know the devil's out there 24 hours a day trying to mess you up, trying to mess up your life. He's trying to ruin you. He'll laugh at you. You say, well, I'm saved. Yeah, but he'll mess up your life anyway. You're still saved, but he, he might mess you up and ruin your life, ruin your testimony. You know what we need here tonight? We need every young person in here who says I'm saved. We need every one of you to say, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to stand up for Jesus Christ. We don't want your drugs. We don't want your R&B. We don't want your hip-hop. We don't want sick talk. Uh, we don't want rape music. We don't want parties. We don't want net filth. Uh, we don't uh, 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 prance around in a bikini. We don't love doing right. We like what gender we was made. We like what God made us. And we're going to serve God no matter what this world does. Right. After you're saved, there's a call to serving. Will you do it? sit down. All right, we only got just a little bit of time. I'm glad everybody came into church tonight. There's a reason why you're here, and if you're saved, the message that the Lord has put on my heart is only to you. I want to preach for a few seconds called God's Calling You to Service. Listen, y'all, you who are saved, you only have one life to live for Jesus Christ. And what you can do is you can party and you can live in this world. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yes. That means you can stick one foot out in the world right. and you can stick one foot out in, this, in church and you can do what you want to and do as you please, but you will answer to God for everything that you do. Hey, but the Bible also says, it said, what is your life? It is as a Paper that appeared for a little while and then it vanished and hey some of you the Lord has given you a talent but some of you the devil has wasted time and some of the things he used to waste time is TikTok and Instagram yep. and YouTube videos Please. and YouTube shorts yeah, and reels and snapping your boyfriend or your girlfriend or late night FaceTime calls hey y'all that's not what this is about hey when the Lord calls you to service you just don't get to sit back in your own house yeah, you gotta man. go out there Please. and serve for the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to live for God, you got to have standards and morals, you got to give all to God, everything to God, yeah. not just half, yeah. not just a quarter, but all to God. And some of you right now, 
have talents for God. No doubt in my mind, you can sing for God like nobody out of this world. Some of you can play an instrument. Some of you can speak. Some of you can draw. Draw for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you can do something on your phone like technology-wise that I cannot do. Do something for God. As she plays. I wonder who's a teenager out there that would say, you know what? I'm tired of playing around. I only got one life. Oh, God. I wonder a teenager will say, I'm going to surrender all yes. to God. And give him all to call him to come. You know, Eva, he's right. I've just been wasting my life away and all my time on my phone and Instagram. And I just haven't been serving the Lord. I've, I've been witnessing, haven't been handing out gospel tracts. And I just ain't been doing nothing for God and all that Jesus did for us. I mean, he died on the cross for us. What are we, what are we doing here? And I'm just tired of wasting my life and wasting my time away. And I'm just, the Lord just called me tonight to just surrender all and just give it all to him. And I'm going to answer it. Amen. Look, John, that's awesome for you, and I'm proud of you. But that's just not for everybody. I enjoy having fun with my friends and listening to my type of music. I still go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's not like the Lord's just going to unsave me or not forgive me. The Lord gave us this life to have fun, and I just don't feel the call to give it my all tonight. It just seems like a bit too much for me. Oh, God. Amen, y'all. Brother John surrendered all to Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. Listen, y'all, y'all be back to church at 11 a.m. Don't be late, y'all. Come on. God is calling some of you tonight to serve him. He calls you when you're a little child, like he did Samuel. Call him three times. Samuel, you won't hear his voice like you're hearing mine right now but you know that heart starts thumping God's speaking to you listen we put enough prayer and fasting into this meeting here tonight I guarantee you there's hundreds of people in here tonight right now your heart's thumping you're saying this is me God's talking to me he's calling you to be saved he calls you to serve him but then I'll talk about another call you'll receive one day this call, you don't have no choice. This call, you can't refuse. The next call you're going to get from him, you're not going to have a choice. Well, well, I don't want to. You're going to answer this one whether you want to or not. And it's a call to see him. You're called to be saved first. You're called to serve, for serve him second. One day, you're going to get another call. And it'll be to see him. There'll be judgment. As you know, Christians that are saved will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive or lose rewards according to their works. This is not a judgment to see whether you're saved or not. That is determined before you leave this world. Listen to me. You're praying after you're dead don't do no good. You are saved or lost when you leave this world and that will never be changed. You don't reincarnate and come back and try it again. You don't get to come back and get another chance. This is it. This is it. One chance. One life. One opportunity. Don't blow it. You are called to well, eventually we'll see him. We are all standing in line just waiting our turn. One day you're going to get another call. Who is it? Oh, no. It's the Lord. You can't ignore it. You can't refuse it. This time you will answer. One of these days, he's going to call you. He's going to call you. You listen to me? He's going to call you. We all get that call. The Bible said it's appointed a man once to die. But after this, the judgment. You may be healthy. You may be in sports. You may be in graduation. You may be going to spring break. You may be going to the, the beach or somewhere after you get out of school and you don't realize. And then God calls you to see him and to meet him. Now, it's not exactly like it'll happen, but we'll illustrate the fact that all of us will one day see God. Dr. Smith, that I told you about a minute ago, told another story. True story. He said he was preaching one night. 
And he said it was a revival in a small country church in the state of Georgia. And he said as he preached that night, he said uh, there was a 16-year-old girl in that congregation that night. He said as he began to preach, he noticed that girl sort of looked down and fiddled around with stuff like she didn't want to listen. He said he, he kept preaching, and for some reason, he said he went to the back, like a lot of them old country preachers would do in those days. They'd go back and just beg people to come get saved. And he said he walked back there where that girl was sitting. And he walked back and he said, Honey, are you sure you don't want to come and get saved tonight? Are, are you sure? And she said, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And Dr. Smith said, I told that girl, he said, You remember, this might be your last chance. She said, I'm not ready. Her, her mom and dad got in a the car. They left out of the church parking lot and just a few miles down the road went across an intersection and then when we went across that intersection another car run a stop sign and T-boned them right in the, in the back where she was sitting. It flipped the car over and threw the mama and the daddy out of the car over here. She was trapped inside that car. Less than 30 minutes after that preacher warned her. They said a gas line ruptured. When it did, that heat off of that manifold pipe ignited it and that car caught on fire. Her mom and dad heard her screaming and burning and saying, Daddy! Daddy, don't let me. That preacher told me. He told me I'm not saved. I'm not saved. That last thing he heard her scream. I'm not saved, Daddy. I'm not saved. God's going to call you to come see him one day. He's going to call you. Are you listening? He's going to call you. We hear it over and over and over. And the Lord said, because I have called and you refuse. I stretched both my hand and no man regarded. Let me tell you something about God. He's a gentleman. He'll call you and you can refuse him. But I'll tell you something else about God. He's holy. And one day he'll call you and you ain't going to refuse him. He said, because I called. He calling y'all girls tonight? Well, I'm saved. Preacher. He calling you to get right? I believe he is. The Lord gave me this message several weeks ago. I wrote it down. He said, I called and you refused. Let me tell you something, buddy. You know what the Lord's going to say to you? I called one day and you wouldn't answer. Now if you're going to call and I ain't going to answer. Oh, mean God. Why would he let us go to hell? He don't want you to go to hell. He just ain't going to make you go to heaven. You're going to have to answer. You're going to have to answer. You'll see one day. Tell you what he's going to do. He's going to call you to see him one day. Hey, son, come forward. You are called to judgment. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've got no more sickness and no more suffering, no more pain, no more temptation, no more death, no more sorrow, no more trials. I don't ever regret a mile. Don't ever regret handing out a gospel track. Glory, glory to God. I can just worship people. Well done. Now, for the faithful enter into the of the Lord. Yeah, man. Eva Lincoln, come forward. You were called to judgment. Lord, I'm so sorry. I could have led my Christian life to a better potential, and I could have been a better witness for you, Lord, and now my friends can go to hell because of me, Lord. I just wish I could go back. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Suffer loss, but, but you are saved, yet so as by fire. Enter into the presence of the Lord. Now, friends, you see the two that were saved. One was saved and servant, 
The other was saved and wasted her life. Like some of you are doing. Why would you let the Lord save you and pay for your sins with his blood and then waste it doing what other people that's not even saved do? You won't serve him. You ought to be ashamed of yourself here tonight. You're trampling underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord that loved you and saved you. And you're saying, I don't care what you say. I'm going to live like the devil. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. But no thing, I'm going to live like I want to live. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What kind of person are you to do that to Jesus Christ? You say, oh, Brother Danny, when I, I know we're all for, I've, I've failed the Lord a million times. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. If you want to serve, you get back up and you'll serve him and you'll do right. You'll get the junk out of your life and do right. I don't care if you have to go to the altar every single service. Do it. But serve him. Be a witness. We need some young people to say, when I go back to school Monday, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to stand just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You say, well, they don't think I'm a hypocrite. Let them think what they want to. You stand for God. You stand for the Lord. Let them think whatever they say, whatever they Stand up! And serve him. They went to heaven. The other two, not so well with them. Not so well. I'll tell you a story truth story. Years ago, up in Marion, it was, it was boys, we'd get together and play basketball on, on uh, I think it was uh, Monday nights or something like that. We'd all meet at a gym over there in the, on the other side of town. And there's a young man started coming to play ball with us. He was about that tall. I think he was about 6'3", tall, skinny, young, about 22, 3 years old. Maybe, maybe 25. And he had long, black, curly hair, and his name was Michael. I tried to talk to Michael a couple of times because I always felt like, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to witness to everybody here. And I, I still do that. And I said, uh, Michael, you go to church anywhere? He said, well, I'm, I'm raised Catholic, and I moved down here from up north or somewhere like that. And I said, but look, Michael, have you ever been saved? You know, you got to get saved. Being a Catholic don't mean you're going to heaven. Being a Baptist don't mean you're going to heaven. Being a Methodist don't mean you're going to heaven. Have you ever been saved? He said, well, no, not really. I said, you need to think about that. Will you please come to church? And sure enough, one day, about a month later, it snowed. And it snowed all day long, all day long. It's on Wednesday. And I remember thinking, Lord, there ain't going to be nobody at church tonight. It's one of them bad Wednesday where it just snowed all day and it got up about that deep. And you, you couldn't, nobody was getting out. And, and, it, and I thought, the Lord, there ain't going to be nobody there tonight. And we went ahead like we always do and had service. We opened the church that night, and sure enough, just a handful of people could come. And in that back door walked Michael. My heart jumped. I said, glory to God, that's why it snowed today. The Lord wanted uh, uh, you know, to be a small crowd and, and he's going to get saved. God sent him here tonight. I mean, I just had it all in my head. It, he's here to get saved tonight. And we just, uh, we didn't even use both sides of the church. Somebody took a little thing like that and preached on one side and we didn't have no piano player. I played the guitar and we sung a little bit and a man preached. And they gave the invitation and Michael went out there where the water fountains are and he's standing up against the wall like this. And on the way out that night, I stuck my, stuck my hand out and I said, Michael, why don't you get saved? And he looked down at me and he said, I've got a lot of problems, Danny. And I said, but Michael, you can bring your problems to the Lord. You don't, don't wait till your problems are all solved and then try to get saved, y'all. That's like saying I'm going to wait till I get better and then go to the doctor. You need you, when you when you got problems. That's the time you need to come to Jesus. Have you got problems here tonight? You need to come to the Lord. Have you got your life's a mess? Your mom and daddy fighting. Everybody gonna get a divorce. You got you got some kind of disease. You go you failed in school. You, you you got you're on drugs. You need to come to the Lord. Michael said, "It's a lot of problems, Danny. Last thing I ever heard him say. It wasn't two months." I went up to town one day. One of our men, Bobby Dobson, he was here last night. He said, Did you hear about Michael? I said, No, what? He said, Michael and his wife 
And their little boy, who was five years old, was coming down the mountain up yonder. He said a tractor and trailer had a Camaro. And, all that. He said, and the tractor and trailer lost its brakes and come over and crushed that car. He said it smashed them like that. He said the paramedics got there and they said they could hear somebody crying. And it was that little boy, five years old. And he, the only thing that saved him was he's underneath, his daddy's seat was laid all the way back and he's in that little, little hole between the front seat and the back seat. Five years old. And he's cramped, creased up in there. He's going, ah! Ah! And his daddy, dead, and mama's dead. And they said, son, just a minute, we're going to try to get you out, baby. Wait just a minute. He said, my daddy, my daddy's dead! He's dr blood dripping in his kid's head. They said, now, son, your daddy might not be dead. He said, yes, he is. I talked to him and he couldn't talk. My daddy's dead. And the last thing I ever heard that boy say, I got a lot of problems, Daddy. God called him to see him. And he wasn't saved. That boy that got saved that night in that church, he got saved, she got saved. They both went to heaven, the judgment seat of Christ. One went in shouting, the other went in crying. Everybody here is going to be in one of them groups. The other two girls are in a third group. They were not ready to meet God. And they died. They'll face the great white throne judgment. There'll be no mercy there. There'll be no forgiveness there. There'll be no God, I'm sorry, please give me another. It ain't going to work. It's done. God's calling you tonight. And one day he's going to call you to see him. Sophia Johnson, come forward. You are called to judgment. No, 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 no. This cannot be right. Please, can I just go back? Please, just let me go back. I'll change everything. Please, let me just change it all, please. I don't want to go there. Please, please, just let me change it all, please. Taylor Jamison, come forward. You were called the judgment. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. I don't want to go to hell forever and ever and ever. Please just give me another chance. Can I not just go back? Give me one more chance. I'm sorry, I need more time. I'm so sorry. Your names are not found written in the book of life. Heart, ye cursed. It's everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil. And his angels. Everybody here will be in one of those three groups. You'll be saved and serving Him. You'll be saved and backslid. You'll be lost and die without God forever. I know people say, oh, Brother Danny, you shouldn't scare people. Let me ask you something. Is it true? Is that what we said here true? If it's true, they all need to see it. If it's not true, what are we even doing here? If they know hell, what are we even having church for? The Bible's not true. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven. He made the heaven. He made a hell for the devil and his angels. He don't want you to go through it there tonight. This is the closest you ought to ever be to hell fire. If I was you here tonight, I'd get saved by the grace of God. I'd let the Lord have my life. I wouldn't say no to Jesus. No, no more. I wouldn't say no to the Lord one more time. If you're a Christian here tonight, get it right. Get it right. Let's all stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed here tonight. 
Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Why are we saying, girl, get ready? Hey, you're here tonight and you need to get right with God. You need to get something nailed to the cross. You need to get it nailed to the cross tonight. I wouldn't walk across that stage tonight and stand before God and not know I was saved. I'd get in here tonight and I'd get it right, friend. I'd get it right. One day it's going to be too late. One day it's going to be too late. You hear me tonight? Let's go tonight. They're singing tonight. Just the chorus. Ready? Go ahead. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You need to come tonight. Come on. Get out of your seat, young people. You need to serve him tonight. You need to serve him. Let's go right now. Amen. Say it now. I'll take Jesus. Amen. I'll take, I'll take yeah, Jesus. Come on. Need young I'll take Jesus every time. He needs more to leave. Amen. Come on. Come on, kids tonight. You want to come get saved? Come on. We need some adults playing all these coming. Here they come here tonight. Here they come. Let's go. Amen. 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 I'll take Jesus. Amen. Let God speak your heart tonight. Yeah, come on tonight. Amen. Come on tonight. Take Jesus. Take it out Every time. Say it now tonight. Amen. You come tonight. Amen. You come tonight. Come on. Come on. Let's get down here on our knees. Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to serve you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get out of your seat, time. Amen. Amen. Sing it, girl. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Sing it. Yeah, somebody play with me. Somebody play with all these over here. Come on, kids. Come on tonight.
and in the middle. God's not through here tonight. We've been waiting for months and months and months for this night. Don't, don't pay no attention to the critics. Oh, I don't believe in all that stuff. Well, I, I figured you probably didn't. I wonder when the last time you led somebody to the Lord. You better let them come. You better let them come. My pastor said, why are your britches legs out on that altar? It ain't gonna hurt them. It ain't gonna hurt them. There ain't nothing to joke with. But it ain't going to hurt them. God's speaking to your heart here tonight. One of these days it'll be too late. He's holding back. I'm going to have these girls sing one more verse. One more chorus of this. This is your chance. Daddy, your teenage boy. Don't be a fool, man. Life's short. Hell's hot. Heaven's sweet. Don't let the devil distract you. and Get you into a bunch of junk. One more time, ladies. This is your chance right now. Got some coming right now. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Here comes Jesus. Here comes some more. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more than me. just got saved here tonight, y'all. Here's another one. Here's another one. All right, ladies. Some of you ladies have to play with that girl right there. Amen. Here's another one. Come on, y'all. Ladies, come on. Come on, come on. 
Here comes some more. Sing now. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. Oh, God saved. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? God saved. Still coming, some still coming. Here comes another one right here. Here comes another one right here. Come on, come on, you come right now. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Pray with this girl. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've come off the buses. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time he means more to me than the world. Isn't that a blessing, y'all? Amen. 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 Just Amen. 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 One more time. Amen. Come on up here, honey. Amen. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Lord called Samuel. Like the Lord called Samuel. The Lord called that little boy. Lord, Amen. Come on up there, buddy. Listen here, God saved. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You saved tonight. There's a Amen. Amen. There's a bunch of I'll take Jesus. Come on up here, girl. Come on up here. Amen. Amen. While they're coming, everybody come tonight. You come and got right with God. Don't you come back up here tonight? Come on. If you come up here and pray tonight, come back up here right quick. We're going to pray with you before we go. Everybody, come on. Get up here behind me. Amen. You come up here tonight. I don't care if you come on a bus. I don't care if you walk. You hitchhiked. Cops let you out. How have you got here? You come on up here tonight. Amen. Come on. We still got some in the oven over here. Some still praying. There's some praying. There's some still praying. If you come to the altar tonight, come back up here right quick. Move over here, like so they can see you. Come over this way, boys. Amen. Come on over this way. Come on. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at that. I want you to look at that. Amen. Oh, there's always some Pharisee. I know what you're thinking. You better remember you wasn't so hot tonight the Lord got you. I wasn't either, brother. I had hair down to here and an old pair of blue jeans on. But the Lord looked beyond my faults on my need. Saved me by His grace. Amen. Come on, honey. Amen. The Lord called Samuel when he was just a little child. The Lord called Samuel. If you come and make their business with the Lord, come back up here. Y'all, y'all step up this way now. Step up here where I am so they can see you. No, somebody give me a cam. Amen. All right, give me the rest of the lights over, uh, Jeff. And over those ones with the tape on them. Orange and silver. God speaking to you hard here tonight. Some still praying over here this evening. Lord in mercy. I want you to look there. What a mob. Amen. If you got right with the Lord, you come. Come on up here. Come on up here, boys. That boy got saved. One time as a man, he had a bunch of kids saved. Old Carl Lackey up in Mount Airy, North Carolina. He had about a hundred got saved in a big revival. Some preacher man, he said, now Carl, do you really believe all those hundred really got saved? And he said, I don't know. Do you believe them two at your church really got saved? Nobody knows that but the Lord. I tell you how many got saved. Everyone that meant it. I took a say. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be. That's what it says. You don't believe it ain't my fault. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want y'all to bow your head with me one more time. We want to make sure of this. I want you to make sure of this. Never head bowed, never eye closed. Close your eyes, girls. What you're doing here tonight, the Bible said we got to realize we're a sinner. We all know we've sinned. we got to realize that there's a price on sin. There's a heaven, there's a hell. you got to realize that Jesus paid that price. I see some of you weeping and crying and hugging each other, brothers and sisters and mamas. Glory to God, hallelujah, it makes it worth every mile. Hallelujah. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with all of your heart right now while your heads are bowed and eyes are closed Lord, Lord Jesus 
I'm trusting you right now as my Savior and my only hope for heaven. I believe you've died for me. And right now, this moment, I'm trusting you. Lord, I don't want to live for the devil no more. I want to live for you and put you first in my life. Take me to heaven when I die. When you call me to come see you, I'll be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay right here where you're at. How many of you tonight, you just got saved. You just got saved tonight. Would you raise your hand real big and high now? Real big and high and hold them up. Hold them up. Keep them up. Right, uh, one. Hold them up. Don't put them down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22, 23 that I can see here tonight. Oh, preacher, you don't really believe. I don't know if I'd do that if I was you. What's the book say? What does the book say? Come to the Lord like a little child. God can do more than you think he can, buddy, when a child comes to him by faith. Amen. Amen. Boy, better watch that critical spirit. One time David was shouting one time. He's out there shouting, praising God. And his wife was backslid. She looked and said, look at the king of Israel out there. Oh, God, it makes me sick. Thinks he's all spiritual. You know what the Lord did to her? Shut her womb up. She didn't have no kids the rest of her life. Any church group that makes fun of people shouting and worshiping God, their womb gets shut. Nobody ever gets saved in a place like that. Better watch that attitude. I don't know why I say that. I feel like there's some super spiritual giants here who want to be critical. You better thank God if one, if one, and there's more than one, them tears ain't fake. Oh, to God, hallelujah, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Let's sing that chorus together, all of us. You should know that by now. Ready? I'll take Jesus. Sing it out now. I'll take Jesus. see all the tears that I see up here tonight. All the tears. Like that girl right there. Come out here, honey. Look at her. Come right here just a second. She's tore up. I don't even know her. What's your name, honey? Hayden. Hayden. You get saved tonight? <laughs> Still works, y'all. Still works. Amen. Prayer. You know what done that? You know what done that? Not the play. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Jesus said, this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Thank you, church. Thank Shining Light Baptist Church. Been on a 40-day fast. People, and people from other states don't even live around here. Been for this here tonight. Turn everything off at me and we'll see if we can stop that. Listen here tonight. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? You don't like it. We don't like you. <laughs> Amen. They don't like this. Trying to interfere here tonight. I plead the blood of Jesus over whatever that is. Amen. We're in a spiritual battle, glory to God, and the Lord knocked a home run here this evening. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God be the glory. All right. All right, now listen. Some of you have a long way to go. So we're going, we're going to break right now. If you brought these kids, I don't know who's ours. Who's Brother Ronnie's? Brother Ronnie, how many of you got up here? Four. Okay. Four. Uh, so all these are ours. Uh, yeah, these are Kelly's. Those are Ethan's. Uh, so we know who, who these are. Amen. All right. So we'll get in touch with them. Get their name. We'll get them in a church. Get them a Bible. Let them get baptized. Start serving the Lord. He's called you to be saved. Now he's going to call you to serve him. He's going to call you to serve him. But one day he's going to call you to see him. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, 
I lost my cigarettes. All right. I can't wait to get out there. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Ain't that something? Listen, I've known that family there for, Lord, 100 years. <laughs> She's getting Mother of the Year every year. She's got 12. You got 12 or 13? I remember when we used to come and pick them all up? Now they're all grown. There's Rat and Brat and all of them. I call them Rat and Brat. They're two twins right there. Huh? Whose is? Which one's their daughter? That little one right there? Bless her heart. Amen. That's some big family right there, y'all. I like them big families. Big family is a blessing from God. It's a, you're broke, but it's a blessing. It's true. It's true. Amen. You can call Joe up and tell him to send you a check. Amen. All right. Here's what we're going to do tonight. There's a lot of people in here tonight. We're pushing a thousand here tonight. And uh, at least 23 we counted got saved, and another 100 got right. And we're going, to, we're going to let you go, but I want you to do me a couple favors. It's still daylight. We have food for those that come on the buses. Uh, they, they've done eight, so y'all going to go get on the bus and go immediately. All those that rode the bus. And I'm assuming y'all will be doing that too, right, Brother Ronnie? Loading up. They're loading up. If you come from Rock Hill, last year it was like 3 o'clock in the morning when he got home on Sunday morning. And had to go back and get some of them for church Sunday morning. And so uh, y'all go get on the bus when we dismiss. We got about five shirts, youth rally shirts left. Never a time. He's not been faithful. They're right over there. Sonny and Cher would love them. And you, you'll... Uh, You'll make sure you're going to get one of them. And um, uh, don't, don't miss anything that's going on. We have hamburgers, double hamburger plates, walking tacos. I'm telling them things as good as any Mexican restaurant in town. Get you a walking taco or talking waco or whatever they are. Get you a talking waco and, and eat it. It's delicious, really. I was starving last night. Man, I ate that thing like that. Then we have bumper stickers and those street preaching signs. Jeff will be over here with them. Get you on them street preachers and take it to your neighborhood and put it on, nail it on a tree and be a witness to the neighbor. Get you a bumper sticker and go in your car. They're about all gone. Get them and go. All right, God bless you. We'll see you in the morning, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, church tomorrow morning. Don't miss it. Amen. Come praying. Bring somebody with you. Church tomorrow morning. All right.